Hey, so our intention is instead of thinking about holding our shoulders back to create this idea of good posture, whatever that is, we're going to use an exercise to help our shoulder girdle and arms and shoulders explore the both ranges of the spectrum of movement they can do, which we hope by exploring both extremes, we can allow our structure to naturally choose for itself where its best center can be. So here's what you wanna do if you'd like to follow along. We're gonna think about the shoulder girdle, so the uh, clavicle in the front and the scapula in the back, and then where the arm fits into that. We're gonna call that the shoulder girdle. And let's first take the whole shoulder girdle back on the rib cage. Keep your sternum level with the walls. Don't let yourself tip back. So we're just feeling pure retraction of the scapulae on the rib cage with the collarbones widening, widening as they come along for the ride. And just see how much movement you possess here. It shouldn't be a shit ton. And then if you go the other way, let your arms come along for the ride and just let your shoulder blades slide forwards on your rib cage. This is our protraction. Shoulder girdle moving forwards. If you see the tips of your shoulders coming up to your nose in your peripheral vision, you have elevated your shoulder blades. That's not what we're after. This really pure forwards glide of those shoulder girdles. Again, without any sort of pulling with the arms, just let them dangle from the sockets. Now, if we layer in another level to this, bring the shoulder blades back, again, without them hiking up, and the arms are just dangling. You're not using your arms to pull your shoulder girdle back. When you get to your full range here, you should feel like some opening in the front and a bit of compression in the back here between the shoulder blades. You can take your arms now and rotate them externally, and you should feel how that creates even more retraction of the shoulder blades. Opens up the muscles on the front of your chest, giving them a little bit of eccentric load. And it should start to tip your ribcage back now into a posterior tilt or a spine extension. If you keep your head level and don't let it tip back with you, you should get the sense that the back of your neck starts to decompress. And then if you go the other way, scapula protracting. If you go far enough and you're moving into your full range, you'll feel a bit of a nice stretch on the back of your shoulders. And now from here, take your arms and turn them all the way in. The internal rotate those humeruses, humeri. But make sure you're doing this again without a shrug, without pulling your arms forwards. Keep your hands under your shoulders. The more you twist your arms in and protract, you should feel a natural sort of slouch happening to your upper back. And if you want a real bonus, as you slide your shoulder blades forwards, think of your upper thoracic spine pushing back between them two. So we have what I like to call a good quality slouch, not this. You're staying on axis, head over rib cage over pelvis. And we're just exploring the full movement potential we have as we differentiate the movement of the scapula, the clavicle, and the arms, and the rib cage and spine from each other, giving us more options for movement here. And by exploring both extremes of that spectrum of movement that our shoulder girdle and our arms should be able to do, hopefully, our really clever bodies will find a natural sense of center in between those, and you won't even have to stand up straight. Hope that was useful. Have an awesome day.